Good morning. It is Wednesday, right? I think. I think it's Wednesday. Hard to tell these days when you don't have a regular schedule. But regardless, I do have Neuro Coffee in hand. So I'm telling you, man, I have been killing it with the Neuro Coffee. It is, say it with me, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for playing along. Um, I was talking with uh, little Mikey Camperini last night. Actually, Mike Camperini, uh, soon to be physical therapist Mike Camperini, uh, former Padawan, very smart kid. Um, somebody's going to snatch him up and be very, 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 very happy. But we were talking back and forth about about the model and things and clarifying some some elements of it. And we eventually got to the influence of, of how shape change drives movement. And of course, that influences the, the discussion of, well, what do bones do? And the thing that I want people to recognize is that bones are viscoelastic just like everything else. So I'm fond of saying that um, you're 99% water and 1% stuff. And that 1% stuff is all the same stuff. And so it behaves the same. But the way that, that the viscoelastic element of the system behaves is also dependent on the forces that are applied. So there's seven components of force, magnitude, location, direction, duration, frequency, variability, and rate. And if you'd like me to say that again, I'd be happy to. So it's magnitude, location, direction, duration, frequency, variability, and rate. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the way that we, we behave within those forces or apply those forces, those viscoelastic tissues are gonna behave a certain way. So let me give you an example here real quick. So I have, um, I'm, I'm very well known for using toys as demos. So that's Silly Putty, okay? And so if I ball up the Silly Putty, and, I, and it will behave a certain way under that shape. And so if I bounce it, it'll bounce like a ball. And, but it also has other behaviors. And so if I apply a different kind of force, so if I apply a gentle force to it, it will stretch like so. And then if I apply a violent force, it snaps clean, as you can see there. And so it's the same stuff, but it behaves differently under different circumstances. And so one of the things I want you to recognize is that your 1% stuff does the same thing. And so under certain, certain forces, it will be stiff. And under certain forces, it will be a little bit more pliable. And when we talk about bones, we, we tend to have this model in our head that looks a lot like this. That, that these things are hard and immobile and, and we only see these relationships. And the reality is, is that bones bend and torque and twist and compress and expand, which means that they store and release energy. So when we talk about plyometrics and they talk about things like the stretch shortening cycle, so they're looking at muscles and tendons, we tend to neglect the influence of the skeleton itself because the skeleton is storing and releasing energy and I would argue that uh, because of its its stiffness and under certain circumstances it may be a huge driver in performance and our ability to, to leave the ground or lift heavy things and, and so this compression and expansion concept that, that I'm so fond of talking about really applies to to something like like the skeleton itself. Um, one of the other ways that you may be able to see this is in, in a, a powerlifter performing a box squat. So when a, when a powerlifter unloads their, their, their body weight or the external load onto, onto the box, that's the system expanding and taking advantage of the elastic elements. So yes, all of the collagenous tissues are, are participating. But again, since we're talking about bone, I want you to think about this for a second. So as the downward pressure, they sit down on the box and they start to spread out. And so again, if I take my, if I take my little ball of silly putty and I just compress it a little bit like that, that's kind of like the power lifter sitting down on the box. The cool thing is, is they're gonna have this elastic recoil that allows them to propel themselves upward off of the box. The same thing's going to happen in a counter movement jump or any kind of jump or any kind of change of direction. We're always gonna see this shape change. And so this is one of those things that I, that I want you to just kind of keep in mind when we're talking about performance. 
but also with any kind of movement. So when we talk about simple things like breathing or how the compressive strategies influence our ability to move and how it changes the shape of the axial skeleton, which then influences what movements are available to us. These are the things that we have to keep in mind because we always have this, this overly rigid model of what this skeleton um, sort of represents when the reality is it's as pliable as everything else. Case in point, um, if, if you've ever seen an avulsion fracture, so, so let's just say you have an inversion um, force going through the ankle and, and more commonly you're going to get an ankle sprain, which is, which is uh, stress on the ligament, but every once in a while you get what's called an avulsion fracture where the ligament is actually stiffer than, than the bone at that point and it rips off a piece of bone instead of damaging the, the, the ligament. And so this is a representation of the fact that the bones are no different than anything else. It's just how the forces are applied. So when we're talking about making changes in people's ability to move, I want you to appreciate that these shape changes are taking place. So the pelvis is not one rigid piece. It is not just three pieces of bone. It is a malleable shape changing structure, just like the thorax. It behaves exactly like the thorax will under certain circumstances. And so again, appreciate that when you're, when you're trying to make changes in people's ability to move, or you're trying to alleviate um, situations that, that may produce pain and, and, and such. So just food for thought for today. Have a great day and I'll see you guys.